The following is a special presentation. Welcome to Making Fun of MacGyver's second annual Halloween Mactacular. Jesus, you know, I, I remain dumbfounded that you guys have lasted long enough to have two of these circle jerk sessions, but so be it. All right. Uh, starring Sam Jordan, Jeffrey Hess, and special guest appearances by Charo, Paul Lind, Willie Tyler and Lester, Tim Conway and Harvey Corman, and surprise visits from MacGyver Universe characters. And now your host for the evening, the man who says if you've got it, haunt it, eh, Sam Jordan. <laughs> I guess, Vern, th I guess thank you for that introduction, Vern, and welcome everybody to the second annual Halloween Mactacular. We've assembled another bone-chilling evening of entertainment that we hope you'll be gobbling up all night. I've got my close personal fiend, Jeffrey Hess here. Jeff, happy Halloween to you. Happy Halloween. Let's make it mactacular. Yeah. How you feeling? Are you in the spirit? We're right in that, that zone of Halloween time. I love it. Halloween is probably my favorite holiday. I uh, used to do a lot of cosplay, dress up, all that kind of stuff. Now my kids are getting old enough to trick or treat, and it's so fun. I love horror movies and stuff like that, and so this is, a, this is fun. I enjoy it. Yeah, and then now we're just adding MacGyver to the mix, and it just makes for a real fun night. Uh, but you know one thing we had last year? I don't know if you remember, but it's back. Uh, the comedy monologue, Jeff. So buckle up, because I'm about to transform into Paul Lind, 1977 Paul Lind. And welcome to my pumpkin patch, everybody. How are you doing? It's really gourd to be here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, someone asked me if I was uh, going to dress up as MacGyver this year for Halloween. I said, I don't know. I'm going to have to mull it over. <laughs> hey, knock, knock, Jeff. Who's there? Dustin. Dustin who? Dustin off last year's Halloween costume so I can wear it again. <laughs> Like the mullet. Inflation's really getting to everybody. <laughs> you know what MacGyver would not be able to escape from while using a paper clip? A desk job. <laughs> a desk job. Yeah. Yep. Hey, you know, my wife keeps telling everyone I'm kind of like MacGyver. Oh, why is Always that? solving our problems with a knife and duct tape. Whoa. Wow. Yeah. I'm surprised she says anything after that. Jeffrey, always creeping it real. Yeah, looking good. You know, he and his wife have uh, quite a love story going between them. They're a regular Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> you know, Jeff and his wife, uh, they've been having sex for years. In fact, uh, they, they made a movie about all their bedroom activity. Maybe you've seen it. The Quiet Place. Yeah. And of course, that was followed up by the Fresno Lame Sex Massacre. Maybe you've seen that one, too. And his wife has been holding the grudge also. Yeah. And they just had their second child. His wife is running a double feature about Jeff's access to her vagina. Get out and nope. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got me with that one. <laughs> and same, di same director, too. That's a really tight joke. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Let's get this party startled, shall we? Now, don't be a, a jerk, Alana, Jeff. Come on, Jeff. Let's give him a pumpkin to talk about. All right, that's it. That's <laughs> it. <we're> <laughs> oh, my gosh. So I, once again, we've done this. Uh, I've got a mullet wig on. I've got a MacGyver-ish vest and a flannel shirt. But you, Jeff, last year you were quail, but you have really gone above and beyond. Tell them who you're dressed so up So I'm coming right tonight as uh, Max Main and recurring paramour, Penny Parker. I've got my red cowboy hat that she's in a distinctive episode of. We haven't re we haven't reviewed it yet, but it's coming up. I've got a wig with nice Penny Parker curls to the shoulder. I feel like I'm looking good. <laughs> oh, and I'm wearing one of my wife's blouses. Wow, wow. So if you never checked us out on YouTube, folks, this is the perfect time. We've got a ton of good stuff on YouTube. Yeah. But you need to see me and Jeff dressed up as MacGyver and Penny Parker here to celebrate the second annual Mactacular. Uh, I gotta tell you, this this mullet wig itches like the Dickens. What are you? Are you dealing with any kind of beauty? You know, p are you paying the price for your beauty over there in any way? It is exceedingly hot under here. Uh, mm -hmm. I got the wig and then the hat, so it's like a it's like a heat sandwich, and there's just sweat rolling down the back of my neck. I also have a couple of bright lights that are in front <laughs> of me. It's I, I pay the price for this beauty for you people. 
Now we've got uh, a lot of candy ready to go. I hope you got your, your full-size Snickers bars or whatever we're giving out this year. But uh, I don't think the trick-or-treaters are coming by yet, but we're expecting a good amount this year. Um, but while we have a little time, let's do some viewer mail. All right, the uh, Making Fun of MacGyver hotline is ringing once again. And uh, let's just see what we have here. Hello, MacGyver. Quail here. MacGyver, this is Quail Mac. Quail calling. It's too bad you missed my phone call because now I will have to leave this message. But don't worry, I'm sure the recording of my crime plans will not in any way assist you or the police, MacGyver. As you can probably tell by the sounds around me, I am in a submarine, MacGyver. Now, MacGyver, you may be asking yourself, MacGyver, why is Quail in a submarine? MacGyver, I will tell you. It's because I, Quail, have learned the location of your houseboat in Vancouver, and I'm on my way there right now. <laughs> oh, Quail, you really have done it this time. Now, MacGyver, that's you, Mac, will not be forewarned by the sound of me sliding up on a skid of mustache grease and sweat. By my calculations, I should be approaching your houseboat at any moment. And I'm so happy this is still the 1980s, and this message is on your home answering machine. I expect you will be listening to it right now, as I prepare to press the torpedo button and end you once and for all, MacGyver. <laughs> oh, MacGyver, nothing's happening, I think. Oh, oh, silly me, I forgot to load the torpedo. Yes, you know, old quail, always making self-inflicted wounds. Oh, my therapist says I need to quit the negative self-talk, and uh, you, MacGyver, don't even think about me. Let's just... Oh, this thing is heavy. Oh, I thought the sandwich dude had already loaded this thing. Oh, I really should not have skipped leg day, MacGyver. I'm usually a brains-of-the-situation kind of guy. Oh, but MacGyver, you will soon meet your watery grave, and I, Quail, will be on top of the mountain. Oh, and here we go. Okay, well, now, so what is this part? Okay, MacGyver, just hold tight. Oh, Quail is getting it. It says, press button to arm. No problem, MacGyver. Your end is nigh, MacGyver. Oh, my hands are all sweaty. Oh, this is a bit heavy. I really should not have skipped back, chest, legs, and arm day either. Oh, no. Oh, no, Mac, it's like... Mac! Mac! Quail will have his revenge! Whoa. That was amazing. Uh, so that was something. One of Mac's uh, arch villains calling in on the Making Fun of MacGyver hotline as he's trying to go kill MacGyver, but it sounds like Quail died. Yeah, it does sound like that. There's a watery explosion at the end. <laughs> Pretty scary stuff with Quail <laughs> under seas. MacGyver under siege and, and Quail under seas. Yeah. Gosh. It's well, it's pretty scary that Quail found MacGyver's houseboat in Vancouver. And then are we scared that he had our number and... You know, I'm, I'm not quite sure how that got out. Uh, <laughs> did Mac reroute his voicemail to us or something? Oh, true. Or like, right. So he, he thinks us? he's calling know. MacGyver. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's uh, right. Well, there we go. There's the hook. Well, there he thinks he's it. calling MacGyver and actually he's, <laughs> you know. So you look so. up in the phone book and you see like MacGyver, comma, making fun of, and then the next one is... Angus, no, it wouldn't work that way. I guess, you know, but I mean, you know what I'm saying, right? Like he just yeah. went with the first MacGyver he saw in the phone book. Right. Well, you heard him. He's always making self-inflicted wounds, you know, negative self-talk. MacGyver doesn't wow. even think about him anymore, really. So, you know, you got to move on, Quail. Okay. So it's Halloween, spectacular number two. It's a party. We're having a party. We're expecting guests. But uh, what do you need for a party? You need a good drink. And as we've been talking about in recent episodes... We've got this idea of making a MacGyver-inspired cocktail a mactail, which is also fitting because MacGyver doesn't drink, so it's like a mocktail, but it's a mactail, and we finally have got a recipe we can agree on, and we're going to do this tonight live for the first time on this recording. <laughs> uh, we're going to make so a mactail. This is, this is like groundbreaking stuff right here. No, it really we is. Making it really the is. first ever mactail. Yeah. So mark the time down. I would expect at least 20 to 35 YouTube hits on this within the year. So it's big. Oh, my God. Oh, Look, hey, it's our the doorbell. first trick-or-treater. Hey, I love it. 
trick or treat. Oh, you appear to be a bird of some kind. Yeah, I'm a brown eagle. You know, they have just one mate their whole life. It's Darren, the eagle-loving, hand-gliding, can't-wait-to-grow-up 10-year-old boy from MacGyver Season 2, Episode 8, Eagles. That's right, guys. It's me. My favorite episode of the season because it's so bad. Darren, how are you? <laughs> Why did you hate that episode so <laughs> My much? My favorite Jeff? episode of the season because it's so bad. I think it is probably the worst episode of MacGyver <laughs> ever made. And here you go. A full-size Snickers and a full-size Three Musketeers bar because you don't get a dump truck like my butt without some work. Oh, um, gosh, guys, my birds can't eat chocolate bars. Do y'all have any live mice? Actually, we do, yeah. We can give them the rodent ball, Jeff. I got that's it. The, uh, that's the candy. That's the rodent ball. Just reach into that, Darren. Don't want to mix them up. Hey, thanks, mister. Now, Darren, I got to say, you know, it worked out with MacGyver. But I, w I would say typically it's not a good idea to go tandem hand gliding with a strange man you just met within 24 hours. You know, that's what you did in that episode. Eagles, it worked out for you, but... Oh, come on! Hey, man, sorry to be the one to scold you, but someone's got to tell you. Hey, I'm not a baby anymore! Darren, Darren. I'm tired of you treating me like I'm a little kid. Oh, we know, buddy. It's okay, you're a big kid. I don't need you to look out for me. I don't need your help. I can handle myself. You are four foot eleven and a hundred pounds. That's true. You're standing on a scale, Darren. I hate it here. I'm leaving. I'm gonna go deep sea diving with the sketchy guy I just met next door. And don't bother trying to come after me either. Uh, okay, we weren't gonna, but see ya. Uh, that neighbor is bad news. Yeah, that's the one who had to tell us when he moved <laughs> in. <laughs> Jeff, you got an all-time favorite horror movie or something on your short list? Give me uh, a couple. Well, on the short list is The Shining, The Babadook. Yeah. Um, have you ever seen a movie called Oculus? No. Excellent horror movie. It's an excellent horror movie about a scary mirror, which doesn't sound like a good setup, but it is very good. Uh, uh, Hereditary is the best recent horror movie that I've seen yeah, in some time. I've heard time. good We're things about it. I need to check it out. Yeah. A24, this big like art house production people. And we got Blumhouse, who's released tons of these low budget, but really scary horror movies. Uh, Sinister was one. There's a whole conjuring like mini universe that has come out with like, Annabelle and the Nun and all those kind of things. Uh, let's see. Is there anything else? Uh, I watched. Oh, actually, there's one out here. I have a recommendation for this year. Uh, there's a movie called X, which parents don't watch it with your kids because it's full of nudity. But it is like an homage to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Mm. And it's great. Uh, it's A24, nails the aesthetic, looks and feels like a 1970s film. The original okay. Texas Chainsaw Massacre is great. It still holds up. And so, you know, that's that's where I'm at. Oh, we got another trick another or treater. doorbell. Jeff, you want to get that one? Okay. Who is this? It's a woman. It's, uh... She's riddled with bullets. Smells Russian. <laughs> Wait, who is it? Who is this? Who are you? I'm Lisa, the ghost of dead girlfriends past. Oh my God, it's Claire Fisher oh, as Lisa. Oh, Lisa. <laughs> From, what was the name of that episode again? We just watched Lost it. Love. Lost Love, parts Lisa one and two. Lisa from Love Lost. Claire, you dressed up. I don't think anyone has ever dressed up as Lisa from Love Lost. <laughs> like, that is not the more popular Walmart costume to pick no, up. No, no. You know, remember this woman? She was on MacGyver two episodes. She got shot in the back. She had an exploding necklace. Yeah. And then three episodes later, her same actress showed up again. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Look at that face. Look at that face over there. And, uh, stop it. You did, Claire, you did that last year on this same episode, too. You said something that was coming up in future. Yeah. Stop that. Well, you edited that one yeah, out. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's our own. It's a tradition yeah. here. Well, welcome, Claire. What kind of candy? Reach into the, the bowl there. We'll take whatever candy you want there. What, what kind of candy uh, is yours, Claire? What, what kind of Halloween candy do you like to go for? Uh, I like Skittles packets, the tiny ones. We have some of those. Yay. But what, don't go for that bowl over there. It's, yeah, it's, uh, it's rodents. There's rodents in that bowl. Rodents. Yes. Watch that one. Ooh. Uh, but they're dead. <gasps> yeah, they're dead rodents, yeah. but still rodents. It was for Darren from Eagles. He was feeding them to his, uh, his brown eagles. Oh, uh, okay. But uh, welcome. Uh, Claire, you're just here in time. Your costume looks great. Uh, come on in. Get some candy. Come on in. Thank you. We're going to be making a Mac tail shortly. Now the doorbell. Uh, the, the door, I'm almost out of full-size Snickers. Well... We are out of uh, Skittles. Claire took all those. But uh, all right, Jeff, you want to get it? See this? who this trick-or-treater is? All right, let's go here. Let's open this door up. And who do we got? 
Okay. Fishing pole. It's another wolf. A woman has a fishing pole with blonde hair and some mom jeans, some acid wash mom jeans. Oh, are you, uh, are you, uh, Lisa? Lisa Allen from MacGyver's. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, season one, uh, episode 11, Nightmares? Is that who you are? Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, that's a great costume. It's our friend Vivian from Taiwan. Hey Vivian. Hi. Killer costume. Wait way to go. I didn't now I always thought you you were lived in a dorm or a small apartment, but you have room for a fishing pole there, which is great. <laughs> yeah. So again, this is uh Vivian from Taiwan, one of our patrons, one of our biggest fans, nicest fans. And it's just somehow it's never ceases to amaze that we have someone listening. Around what time is it there? So we're recording. Uh, it's 10 p.m. Eastern here. And what time is it for you, Vivian? Um, 10 a.m. in the morning. Oh, 10 a.m. Okay, that's easy. And you're waking up early on a Saturday morning to play, dress up, make believe, make you Most fun. Most people get up before 10 a.m. <laughs> I am. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, but well. thank you so much. And you got a haircut since the last time I saw you. Did you get a haircut? It seems like it. Yeah, I did. Uh, I just did it last week little bob cut is there something you got more going on in the back or is it like yeah it's a uh, little you don't go for a mullet are you is it like a macgyver mullet thing it's it's called a wolf cut yeah okay. it's a wolf cut i, I was Looks about good. to go for a mullet and there's a mullet is kind of old-fashioned are you sure what about trying a wolf cut <laughs> <laughs> i'm like sure <laughs> <laughs> okay, it looks good. It looks good. well. Welcome, come on in, join the the party. Welcome to the second annual uh, Making Fun MacGyver Halloween Mactacular. All right, now, guys, it's a it's a very important part of the show. We're gonna make the first ever MacGyver cocktail, a Mactail. I've got all the ingredients here, okay, but I'm gonna be making it. So I'll leave it to you guys and Jeff if you can lead the way and describe what I'm doing, and you guys chime in. But I'm gonna make a Mactail, and then we're gonna drink it so just give me one second here so we've been discussing the mactail uh for most of this season i noticed i now i i don't know if i talk about it but i'm a recovering alcoholic so i've always noticed that macgyver assiduously avoids alcohol if you if you guys were going to make a, a mactail what would you have it be what would be in your mactail well we don't see it a lot in seasons one and two but later on mac spends a lot of time at his blender Right, like he's always making these smoothies in later seasons, like health food smoothies. So I'm thinking that a mactail would be like a like a virgin pina colada with the with the cherry on a um, on a paper clip, naturally, instead of on a little umbrella. And what would you make, Vivian? Maybe some um, non-alcoholic eggnog, like the one he tried to make in uh, Phoenix on the sea. Mm. That sounds cool. Sam, it was right there. We went out of our way to make our own, and, and Vivian just like they already made one. <laughs> Morons! He was he was standing at his, his science equipment Vivian, doing it. We don't need that kind of uh, input that makes us feel bad about ourselves. <laughs> All right, so um, so here's but okay, it's a good idea. But for now, we got to go with what we we've got here. So okay, get yourself. All right, we're gonna make a mactail. Get yourself a glass. All right. Any kind of glass. Okay. We're going to go with like uh, whatever kind of that glass this would be. I don't know. All right. Well, mine's 64 ounces. Is that enough? <laughs> yeah, that should be fine. That okay. I've got fine. this big gulp. All right. So you get your glass. Now, um, also, you're going to need duct tape. All right. I got the duct tape here. You need duct tape. Okay. Of course, you're going to need a Swiss Army knife. Okay. So okay. first thing, you got your glass. You start by uh, shaving some ice. Do you're gonna shave some you cubes. Shave some cubes into. Yeah. You did say cubes, right, Jeff? Cubes. Yes. You're gonna shave yes. Pizza cubes. cubes. So yeah. I'm gonna use the, the Swiss Army knife to shave this cube. So Jeff, if you wanna. Yeah. This this seems pretty dangerous, right. actually. Yeah. Make sure you cut away from you. This is gonna turn out. This is gonna end up with a, a hospitalization. So the first step here is uh, Mac is taking the cubes and he's shaving them away from himself with the Swiss Army knife which looks about sharp enough to cut next to nothing. He's shaving ice, still shaving ice. You know, I think the problem here is he doesn't have the Swiss Army model knife model that comes with an ice saw. You know, he should really have yeah, been better prepared. Yeah, the ice cube shaver. Is there really one of those? I bet I could figure one out with the, um, the metal file that's on mine. Oh, Oh wait! Okay, what's now this? he's got he's, the bottle opener. He's got a different utens. He's got. Oh, okay. now he broke the ice. Yeah, now he's trying to shave ice with a bottle opener. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And now, oh, maybe he's gonna try the tweezers. Now he's okay. Now he's given up on the thing. 
All right, that All was right, good. Now, go. uh, next thing you need uh, from oh, that was by the way. Hold on, let me tell you where that was from. The shave cubes. Shave cubes. It's from the Avalanche episode with Pete's little bird. Season legs. two, episode sixteen, out in the cold. All right. Next up, an actual, an actually good episode. Ginger ale, season two, episode two, the Eraser. Uh, Mac is at a bar. This has got Jimmy the Eraser, Kendall. But before that, he fixes the spray at the bartender. Needs her, like, you know, the little CO2 spray nozzle. Mac fixes that, and he gets a ginger ale. So I'm going to pour it on top of your shaved ice. Then you want to put some ginger ale. So I'm going to do that. Okay. So cracking the ginger ale. He's pouring. It's bubbling. It's bubbling. Oh, man, that's a lot of, lot of bubbles on top of that. That's a pretty piss pour, pour. Don't ask Sam for money, because that's poor. He's poor. Someone bail me out of this joke. <laughs> All right. Next up, unfortunately, things take a turn for the worse here. Milk from season one, episode 19, Slow Death. Mac is on a train, and before he, uh, he asks for a, la- a lamb sandwich, he, he wants a big lamb sandwich, and what does he want to wash it down with? Milk. So we're going to add milk to the ginger ale and the shaved ice. Okay. So slow death is also what Sam is going to experience after drinking this mactail. Actually, I mean, I feel like this isn't too crazy. I mean, there's such a thing as a, a white Russian cocktail, so why can't there be a, a white ginger? I guess we call that a white Canadian if it's ginger ale. <laughs> that's that's a, a white Minnesota in <laughs> True. honor of, yeah. We'll Look call it the, the white Angus. see here. It's, yeah. I, oh, I mean, milk and gosh. Pepsi was a thing back in the Laverne Shirley days. All right, no, so it was not. No, it, it actually was. was. No, no, it was not. Yes, that's it bullshit. Was a thing. Yeah, look up. it up. Look it up. All right, so now we're almost done. Next step, though, you got the milk and ginger ale in there. Now you need a stirrer. Uh, this is where you grab one of your giant paper clips. Okay, just get a giant paper clip here. And you stir the drink with the paper clip. Okay. And then is the duct tape to cover your mouth so when you vomit, it doesn't come out? The duct tape is to make a coaster. I'll do that in a second, Jeff. Ah. Uh, but now here's the fun part. This is where you MacGyver the third and final ingredient. Just look anywhere in your pantry, in the refrigerator, for a third ingredient. Okay, it's up to you. Fourth now, ingredient. Fourth, fourth ingredient. ingredient. Oh, are you counting yeah. ice as an ingredient? Well, specifically, it's shaved cubes, <laughs> okay. shaved with a, so, like, you know. So I found something, and I think it's going to go well. I got an apple, a piece of an apple, because it is the uh, state fruit of Minnesota, where MacGyver and Richard Dean Anderson are from. So I'm going to use the apple to garnish on the paperclip as so. Wait, just an apple is the state fruit? They didn't, like, specify a kind of apple? Do, do you know your own state? No, actually, it is specifically the Honeycrisp. Oh, the Honeycrisp. Okay, now, and, now my, my respect for Minnesota has been restored. And you're from New Jersey, right? I am from New Jersey. Do you know what, do you know what the state fruit of New Jersey is? I'm going to guess it's a blueberry. Holy cow, you nailed it. It is a blueberry. There are only two fruit we gl- grow in New Jersey. There's cranberries and blueberries, and I feel like nobody really likes cranberries as much as they like the blueberries. Which is a shame. Well, I mean, we do put it into juice, which is very healthy for you. I think my mactail would involve cranberry juice because it's the juice I'm likeliest to have around being a Jersey girl. Plus, cranberries are uh, farmed by one of the nation's biggest cooperatives. Does it MacGyver? So, also in the spirit of, um, you know, equitable and uh, responsible (laughs) um, food production, which Mac turns out to care quite a bit about later in the run. All right, so I've made a coaster by an Xbox to spot with the duct tape. Now I can safely put my mactail on top, and the milk is curdling, by the way, at the top. I don't, I don't know if that's oh a good God. thing. So is I, it chunky? Are you going to have to chew your mactail? It's chunky on top. So here we go. Uh, happy Halloween, everybody. Happy Halloween. If you got something, take a sip. I'm going to take a sip of the first ever mactail. Here we go. Oh, my God. That's delicious. That is amazing. Put your face on camera and say it. Oh my God, that's he's delicious. drinking more. He, he's he's sifted at least that's twice delicious. now. Delicious ginger ale and that's milk. That's not this true. Now I'm, I really don't like the curdling on top. <laughs> oh, hey, you just get a spoon <laughs> or a fork. Yeah, I think you probably need to agitate it a little. Yeah, stir it up. Why are you waving your camera wildly? <laughs> I don't know. I had no idea there was a window on the other side of that. <laughs> oh boy, that uh, that looks awful. All right, uh, let me 
me take a bite out of this apple. The garnish. And of course, and I got these, uh, you can get giant paper clips on Amazon, eight bucks for a bag of 12. They're four inches tall. That's like 75 cents per clip. Uh, good. It's an apple. You know, it's a fine apple. Is it a honey <clears throat> crisp though? Because for maximum um, Minnesota uh, accuracy. Yeah. Yes, it is. It is a honey crisp. <laughs> 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 <clears throat> All right, Vivian. I know it's too early to start drinking over there in Taiwan, huh? And plus, you're you're young. You're Fortunately, a mactail a mactail is that's non-alcoholic. True. That's true. So non-alcoholic. She could just be pounding, pounding ginger ale <laughs> and milk right now. <laughs> Breakfast drink. Vivian, what do you like to drink? Uh, you're, uh, what is the drinking age, by the way, in Taiwan? When can youngsters start drinking alcohol? Eighteen. Eighteen. Okay. Do you ever drink yeah. alcohol? Yeah. <laughs> Just not in the morning. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, it's a special occasion. What what what's your favorite uh, drinks? Um, mostly craft beer, but for um, the, the the cocktails, I like the cosmopolitan. Ooh, okay. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I basically like everything that is vodka based. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, there's no alcohol in a mactail, but you can feel good about it. You're supporting um, your favorite action adventure hero from the '80s. And yeah, other than we gotta solve we gotta solve the milk milk curdling on top part. But otherwise it tastes fine. Oh, we got a trick or treat. You know what? Uh Vivian, Vivian, why don't you can you get the door for us? Me and Claire are busy here eating Skittles. Can you go get the door? See who's trick or treating? Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's uh it's it's Quail. What Quail? Quail, you, what are here. You, you... quail here. Quail is here. Quail was here looking for MacGyver. Does anyone no, know no, what MacGyver what? is? You're supposed to be dead. <laughs> uh, I thought I was dead, too. You're supposed to be dead. We heard you die. I thought I was dead, too. And then quail turned into a little sea fish and back into a quail. Gee, that's neat. I heard MacGyver's voice. Oh my God. <laughs> I looked it up. <laughs> no, 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 it's just a clip. It's just it's just a clip. He's not actually here. I, um, I looked no. up the address in but, the phone book, and it uh, said MacGyver was here. No, it's, it's making fun of MacGyver. We have a podcast where we talk about the show and the things that you and him got into that time. You know, that was one episode, but he's not here. We just have a, a little show where we talk about Oh, MacGyver. dear. Oh, no. You didn't, uh, you didn't listen to your voicemails, did you? No, we did. We did listen oh. to that, and we heard you try and kill him in a submarine. Oh, no. No, no. That you is not... Save for yourself. That's not what was about it. That's, that's not what was happening, and I'm fairly certain there's not an audio record to indicate otherwise. I was... Merely attempting to... No, there is. There actually is. Make unsanctioned improvements to We can play a clip of it here for you if you You want. You know, I think think actually Quail's mother... Mama Quail is calling, I think. So I'm just going to... Uh, Sure, I just grab grab a couple of pieces of candy here, and then I understand if you got to get going. Okay. Oh, look, an almond mount. What do you like? This is fun. Look at almond almond mounts. This is great. Yeah. No, there's always lots of these left. I can't figure out why. Almond Joy? Almond Joy? Is that a thing? They had almond joy. Oh, back. okay, almond joy. <laughs> almond mounds. Yeah. There's mounds and there's almond joy. What's the one with well, coconuts in it? I understand. You've almond been through joy. a lot of trauma. Yeah, that's uh, almond joy. They both have coconut. Almond but mounds is just. It's coconut. strange they're called almond joy because that's an emotion you do not feel when you're eating them. <sighs> you take that back. Okay. Coconut is All bad. Right. Coconut's that's bad. That's it, Quail. I'm you sorry. are leaving this party this instant. I won't have the candy disrespected like this. I didn't want to be here in the first place. Get out of here, Quail. Shoot, Get shoot. out. Fine, fine. How dare you try and kill our idol. And dis our candy. Vivian, you handled that you handled that quite well. Yeah. I, uh, wow, what I miss? Uh, I went I went to the I went to the bathroom. Did I miss anything? <laughs> I mean, oh, Jeff, Vivian did a roundhouse yeah. kick yeah. and threw Quail right out the door. It was awesome. <laughs> oh, I missed the best part of the party. But like Sam was telling a criminal we had evidence of his crimes, which means like he has not learned anything from watching MacGyver. <laughs> Oh, that's true. I know. Um, Jeff, you want you have your ghost you're, story. You're, you're the woman. You're the pregnant woman in birthday oh, yeah. right now, where she like decides to confront her yeah, husband the, the, in front the, of the, the entire the, gang. Oh yeah, yeah I'll just uh-huh. threaten. It's what that scene from Batman. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'll just threaten yeah. the most powerful And you person think your idea is uh-huh. to threaten yeah, this uh-huh. man? Okay, so mm-hmm. yeah. Sam, next time we're face to face with a, a arch nemesis of MacGyver, don't tell him how much we have on All tape. Right, you're right. You're right. You're the expert. I mean, you know these 
episodes better than us. Dead, both dead the, podcast let me just say, hosts. Claire and Vivian, they both know MacGyver better than us, but we've got the podcast. <laughs> I have made it. I have. Wa- it is not only MacGyver. I have a very, very detailed list of the ways that women can die in fiction and in real life, and it's made me very safety conscious. All right, let's get a, a plug very, for your website while we're in the middle of it. Go for it. Uh, sure. I run deadfictionalgirlfriendsreport.com, a, a feminist investigation into why male protagonists are constantly having their love interests die. Now, we talked about having a scary MacGyver ghost story for tonight, yes. that you were going to come up with something. So actually, what I have... Uh, what I have uncovered, I uh, was out uh, prospecting for gold in my backyard, and believe it or not, I stumbled upon a lost vault of MacGyver footage, episodes that were never released. And I went through them, and I found a Halloween episode. So this is a little clip from a MacGyver Halloween special. There's a saying where I come from, in the wilds of northern Minnesota, that a parking lot is just like a sea, and cars are like little boats. And when you sail the high seas, the parking lots are just like ports, and ports usually mean safety. Usually. But sometimes even the most experienced sailor can have their rope tied in knots they didn't even know existed, and find slack in their sails, if you don't respect the shifting emotions of the old lady sea, the parking lot. And that's where I found myself today, outside a new barbershop, St. Anne's, pulling into the untamed sea of parking lot outside a strip mall near Vancouver. Usually this is where my grandpappy would pop up and call me Bud and tell me I need a haircut. But today, I'm on my own, because he's dead, and also in the trunk. But that's a story for another time. Well, what have we here? A customer on Friday the 13th on a blue moon on the seventh day of the seventh week of the seventh month. Please come in, come in, come in. Didn't you say it was the 13th? Oh, never you mind about that. Just have a seat right here. Yes, this seat is just for you, especially for you, Mr. MacGyver. I didn't even say my name. I heard the theme music when you pulled up. It's pretty unmistakable. That, that actually makes sense. Now, how can I cut you? I mean, how can I help you today? I have a date with Penny Parker tonight, and I need a little trim up. My feathering is getting a little ruffled, if you know what I mean. Yes, of course, of course. Have a seat, have a seat. I would never clip your mullet. I'm glad, because it's kind of my signature look, and my neck gets cold. And also, never mention cutting the mullet, just feathering. You know... Now that I'm getting a closer look, is your skin red? Oh no, of course not. I just, I just had a bad sunburn. Have a seat. I gotta tell you, I always find getting my hair cut a little nerve wracking. You know, putting your entire look in the hands of someone else, trusting them not to mess up your perfect feathers and mullet. Mostly, it's the mullet I'm concerned about. Did, did I just see a barbed tail and are those horns under your hair? What is that you say? I have a hard time hearing you over these clippers. This is a very strangely designed barber shop. The pentagram on the floor, the dripping blood down the walls. What was that sound? Oh, that, that's just the screaming of souls tormented for eternity. Why do you ask? Oh, I thought it was the new Taylor Swift album, but yes, it's all a little bit satany. I was going to go with committed to the aesthetic. But I guess I can get the Satan vibes. MacGyver, how is it? Just enough feathering, mullet intact? Actually, yes. It looks good. You know, between the red skin, the horns, the barbed tails, the blood, the soul screaming in eternal torment, I'm starting to wonder if something's unusual here. Hey, why are you slowly approaching my mullet in a menacing fashion? Me? Oh, no, no, no. I am approaching very quickly. No! I have done it! I have stolen the mullet of power! You demon! No, MacGyver! I am Satan! I hope you're prepared for the responsibility that comes with it, bud. Of course I'm ready! I'm Satan! I know about your silly mullet! 
Oh, Mr. Satan, I need help. I'm having a baby. Wait, what? Help? No, no, not now. I'm busy gloating. Hey, Mr. Satan, I need your help. I'm being pursued by the mob. Oh, the mob? I love those guys. Hi, good day, Mr. Satan. I need your help. My wife and I are on a cross-country road trip. Not now. I'm busy gloating. Our oil well won't stop gushing. My husband is stuck in a Russian prison. Pirates stole my gold. What is happening? Where are all these people coming from? You wanted the mullet. You got the mullet. Here, take it back, take it back. Oh, no need for magic. I have duct tape. That's much better. I should probably go now. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Oh, hey, I rem how are you doing? I remember you. How's the baby? Oh, that's great. Another one. Nice. Mac, Mac, come back. Come back. What am I supposed to do with all of these people? Oh, I don't know. But I think I'll give you some time to mull it over. Yeah, very good. So, uh, good job. Satan, Satan tricks Mac, steals his mullet, and immediately regrets it. It's actually less ridiculous than the plot of the actual Halloween episode of Mac <laughs> that's coming up next season, which I won't spoil for Penny, the Penny Parker one. Uh, the Secret of Parker House, yes. Secret of Parker House, right? Oh, we got another trick or treater. I'll get this one. Let me go get the door, guys. Trick or treat! Oh, look, it's uh, it's Yana. Hey, it's Yana, hey, guys. Hey, happy Halloween. Little gypsy girl. It was Mike's favorite. Mike always thought it was Yana at the door. Yeah, it's <laughs> Hey, guys, I'm back. Great to see you. <laughs> I know it is. Uh, help yourself to some candy, Yana. Damn right I will. But, Yana, last year um, you were dressed uh, as a little Romani, a little uh, gypsy Yeah, you were a gypsy last, last year, just like this year. That's right. But you, you are a gypsy. And once again, that's what makes this costume so conveniently cost-effective. Oh, boy. Rehashing the jokes. I'm with the girl on this. I mean, DIY, you know. Wait, waste not, want not. Very, very uh, in keeping with uh, defectors from communism. Plus, the Budapest Walmart was all out of Megan the Stallion costume, so... That's a good thing. That's probably a good thing. Jeff, did you get the last uh, one of those? <laughs> I have three of them. Very cheeky. <laughs> Claire... In that that costume, uh, do you have a transistor radio by any chance? I do have a transistor radio hidden in this purse. <laughs> ooh, ooh, can you play rock and roll? Yeah, it's Yana's favorite. Can you pl can turn on some rock and roll? All right, awesome. <laughs> Is that a pigeon that just fell out of there? <laughs> Yana, it's your favorite. Rock and roll. Hey, blow it out your camel hole, Hess. It's only hip hop these days for me. He bought a phone just for pictures of his wet ass pussy. Oh, Paid off, my yeah. just to Screw kiss you, me on his wet I'm out of here ass. anyway. Thanks for the candy, grandpas. And she's gone. Wow. Um, What'd she take from the candy bowl? Looks like... Oof. Oh, she took... All that's left is the uh, bowl. Everything. Woo! <laughs> yeah. So she took the rodents <laughs> from the bowl, too? She took the candy bowl and the rodents bowl? Guys... Happy Halloween. This has been the second annual. Happy Halloween. <laughs> Making fun of the guy. <laughs> Drive this car like right off the street. <laughs> it's been so fun. It's been so fun. Uh, happy Halloween. Um, any final thoughts, Claire? Just remember they didn't burn witches. They burned women. Oof. And Vivian, uh, I don't know if you're celebrating Halloween, but thank you for joining us here tonight. It's been so much fun to have uh, someone all the way from Taiwan. We love that you're here and we love that you love Max so much. Thank our Patreon patrons who uh, fuel us to do these kind of shenanigans. And let's thank the two women we have right here. Claire, thank you for being in our corner there. You're our favorite feminist. And uh, again, check out deadfictionalgirlfriendsreport.com. And we also, of course, want to thank Vivian from Taiwan, who blessed us with her presence on a morning for her, even though we're recording at night. And she wants to remind you, you can find a lot of great MacGyver fan fiction online. 
at the MacGyver Camelverse on fanfiction.net. Okay. Uh, thank you to Mia in Canberra, Australia. We haven't seen Mia in a while. I thought she could make it here tonight. It's her prime time. But, Mia, hope you're out there doing well. And, of course, she reminds us about the importance of being an organ donor and checking in on friends and family to make sure they're doing okay. And Bo in Fort Myers, Florida, who touched in to say that he's okay from that hurricane, but times are tough down there, so keep him in your mind. Thinking of you, Bo. Uh, Caesar from Parts Unknown. Th- Caesar. Hopefully we're going to get to know you one of these days, and uh, we thank you for your support. And Christian from Norway, he chops wood, he drinks beer, he drinks ass beer. (laughs) And Matt Mooney from Minneapolis, Minnesota, fellow podcaster, theater aficionado, scientist, and father of many kids. And Gary from Kelowna, British Columbia, our first ever confirmed fan and closest in proximity to Vancouver. And we just hung out with Gary recently. It was fun. Uh, But we're always looking for new friends, everybody. So please feel free to reach out to us on social media. Say hi. Put something in the tip jar and get the perks that come with it on Patreon, if you like. That's patreon.com slash making fun of MacGyver. But above all else, keep coming back because we are going to keep making fun of MacGyver and making fun of ourselves here like fools tonight. So for Jeff and Vivian and Claire and Yana and Quail and Darren, Thanks again, and uh, we'll see you next time. Happy Halloween, everybody. Peace. Whatever happened to my Transylvania twist? It's now the mash. It's now the monster mash. The monster mash. And it's a graveyard smash. It's now the mash. It's caught on in a flash. It's now the mash. It's now the monster mash. Now everything's cool. Drag's a part of the band. And my monster mash is the hit of the land. For you, the living, this mash was meant to. Get to my door, tell them what is said. Then you can mash. Then you can monster mash. The monster mash. And do my graveyard smash. Then you can mash. You'll catch on in a flash. Then you can mash. Then you can monster mash. Mash. I'm Lisa, the ghost of dead girlfriends past.